Welcome to Open for Business, the Gallatin Valley's only local business and consumer talk show featuring Tom Eaglehoff. The Man Entrepreneur Magazine Radio called the leading authority in the United States for doing business in small town. Here he is, speaker, author, small business consultant, and Mrs. Eaglehoff's favorite son, Tom Eaglehoff. All right, welcome everyone. Open for business. We air every uh, Saturday live from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain Time on AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. If you'd like to be a part of the big broadcast, go to kmmsam.com and click Listen Live. The call-in number during the show, 406-522-TALK, 406-522-8255. I'm here. You're here. Let's get the show on the road. All right. Welcome back, everyone. 25 degrees before, or 25, <laughs> 25 minutes before the top of the hour. It's Saturday, August 6, 2016. It is 76 degrees outside. It's a sweet pea weekend. Happy to have you along with us. And I want to welcome you to the podcast portion of Open for Business. Uh, each week, I share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years about advertising, marketing, promotion, and building strong, successful businesses. And I do these Open for Business podcasts live every Saturday between between 11.30 and noon Mountain Time from the studios of AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman and 13.40 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. And, of course, we stream worldwide on the net at KMMSAM.com. If you missed any of the previous podcasts, you'll find them all on my YouTube channel. Uh, while you're there, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? You'll never miss another podcast. And you'll also find my podcast at my website, SmalltownMarketing.com. That's SmalltownMarketing.com. Go about halfway down the homepage on the left side, you'll find a link to the podcast page and the YouTube page so you can catch up on any of my podcasts that you might have missed. Now, today's topic, I want to talk about how to know when to expand your small business. Now, every business starts expanding with the first day of business because customers come, inventories increase, sales improve, and the business begins to grow. The first major hurdle every business has to conquer is to reach the break-even point. That's the point where the business produces as much or more income than expenses. The next hurdle you must overcome is that point in time when the business outgrows you. It reaches a point where you can no longer manage all the tasks and the work by yourself. You need help. You might need a larger space, better equipment, or a host of other triggers that will let you know it's time for expansion. I can almost guarantee that this decision will be made at the worst possible time in your business life. So prepare for that day now, and it'll go a lot more smoothly. In case you were wondering why I started my website and these podcasts, here are some remarkable stats. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there are around 180,000 businesses that have some form of multiple locations. Another 5 million have only one location, and here's the most amazing one of all. Nearly 14 million businesses only employ one person. Now, there should be a thousand websites like mine to help small business owners, but unfortunately, there's very little profit in helping you because you don't have a whole lot of money. That's the main reason small towns don't have advertising agencies or PR firms. Most business owners hope their business will grow and be successful. Others want to remain a one-person business. Business owners left their previous jobs to start their own business so they would no longer have to work for someone else. So in addition, growth can, cr can create a whole new set of problems that some business owners don't want to deal with. With gro growth comes more responsibility. A new load of responsibility overwhelms some employees that were previously able to handle certain levels of the business. And so are you as the owner. Now, instead of your one-person operation, you have delivery people, a part-time bookkeeper, two or three full or part-time employees, someone to answer the phones and take orders, and counter people or outside sales. In addition to that, you can add absenteeism, employee benefits, vacation, profit-sharing plan, payroll taxes, higher overhead, increased liability, and medical insurance. So with multiple locations, you have an additional problem, communication. With one or two people, a quick meeting has everyone on the same page. With multiple locations, a team meeting becomes a logistic nightmare to get everyone together at the same time for information to be passed or training to be done. A problem in one location has to be solved and the solution passed on to the next location to keep the same problem from happening there. Last but not least, your business is your dream. It's not your employee's dream. They have their own dreams, and their dreams don't include you. So you have leadership and motivation of employees to contend with. So what are the business expansion triggers you should be looking for? How do you know 
when the time is right, kick the business into high gear. Or, to, make, to use a much overused expression, when to take the business to the next level. Are there signs to watch for, to let you know when the time is right? Yes, there are. And here are some of the most obvious. You can no longer fill customer needs in a timely manner. If customers are leaving empty-handed or going to your competitor because you're too busy, then the time has come to do something. Employees can no longer keep up with production demands. They begin making more and more mistakes and missing deadlines. Uh, absenteeism increases and production falls. Due to the increased pressure of your job, you begin making poor business decisions or using quick fixes for problems that need long-term repair. Reaction to the competition... If you're equal to your comp uh, competitors, then you may not need to do anything. If, however, they are expanding and taking business from you because of that expansion, you should at least evaluate the, pros the possibility of expansion. Now, don't misunderstand what I just said. I'm a big believer, I should say, in not reacting to every little thing the competitor does. That's why I advise you to evaluate the situation and no not overreact. Keep abreast of changes in your marketplace or industry. Your business is affected by many factors. One of those factors is the very industry you're in. Government rules and regulations may force additional equipment or other costly changes. Innovation or new products or services might force you to change the way you do business. In New York City, newspaper stands are in trouble because people who used to buy out-of-town newspapers or popular magazines now get the same information on the Internet sooner and for free. Customer perception of your goods and services might change. Back in the 1970s, seven people died from taking Tylenol, which had been laced with poison. Tylenol reacted quickly to remove all the products from store shelves. It took a long time to regain their marketing share, but they did it, but at a sustained cost increase. A whole new form of packaging packaging had to be developed. Tamper-proof packaging had to be implemented along with stricter inspections. Not just at Tylenol, but all pharmaceutical companies had to retool for this change in customer and government demands for safety. So are there ways to postpone expansion? Yeah, there are some short-term uh, measures you can take that may buy you a little time before you uh, must take the plunge. Not everyone works for every business, but one will work for you or for most. Here are a couple things you can do. The quickest and most cost-effective but most difficult to do is to become less wasteful. The problem with this method is it requires absolute dedication from all employees, and that's sometimes very difficult to achieve. You can computerize. You might say that's really expensive. Well, it can be expensive, but it's certainly less than more buildings or vehicles or employees. Can you find a way to streamline the policies and procedures of your company? Are any jobs being duplicated? Can you be more productive with less effort? Can you increase training? Can one or more persons be trained to handle the same job. That way you have a backup in case of illness or an employee leaving the company. Can you reach any new markets with new uses for the same products you produce now? Arm & Hammer baking soda is a cooking product, a toothpaste, a, da a drain cleaner, a cat box freshener, surface cleaner, and it keeps smells at bay in your refrigerator or garbage disposal. Find other markets for the uses of your products. In some cases, you can expand cheaply by taking over part or all of the space next to you. This is the least expensive even most popular way to expand a small retail business. Find out who's leaving your center and negotiate a new lease for the new space. Landlords hate empty, non-productive spaces. Can you license your product or service to others? You'll receive a royalty payment for each product sold or service performed. Now, growth isn't for everyone. Some owners are content with a mom-and-pop image and will never have anything else. Others want to be the next Microsoft. So expansion can be tricky. Expand too quickly or too much? and increased expenses overwhelm the business. Expand too late, and your customer base has been so depleted by your competitors that you don't have enough business to, to support the expansion. We just passed the halfway point in the year. It's the perfect time to sit back and evaluate where you want your business to go in the next 6, 12, or 18 months. And that's the podcast. If you missed any of my previous podcasts, you'll find them all on my YouTube channel or my website at smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. Go about halfway down the homepage on the left, and you'll find a link to the podcast page so you can catch up on any of my podcasts you might have missed. So tune in each Saturday and let's build successful businesses together.